So ever since I started shooting film, I've started editing my digital files in a completely different way. I've toned down my stylizing. They're not very stylized compared to what I did. It's a lot more natural now. So I am going to show you how I did that. Now, let me get this clear. What I'm doing isn't based on any sort of film. I'm not claiming that it's based on the Portrait 800 or the Cinestill or what have you, because I'm just simply not skilled enough. Right, so let me show you how I do it. Let's get right on it. Oh, by the way, I'm giving the Osmo Pocket 3 a go. Tell me what you think of the video quality. Right, I've prepared three images for us to edit, so we'll go through them one by one. I am going to show you how I do it step by step. Now, the first thing I want to do is to make sure it, the profile is an Adobe standard. Now, basically, the first thing that I look at is to tame the highlights, the, um, the exposure, the primaries. So what image, this image is a bit hot, so I like to bring down my exposure, bring down my contrast, tame a bit of the highlights, You seldom see highlights clipping on film scans. Bring up the shadows a little bit. Bring the whites further down and increase the blacks a little bit. I like to decrease clarity as well to take off the digital edge that we get. So this is basically my starting point. And because I'm in an Asian country, I like to warm up my images a little to complement the skin tone. I would like it somewhere about there. Then go to crop, use auto, straighten it out a little bit, give it a crop that I like. That is basically it. Now the next thing that I do is color grading. So I go to the calibration panel. This is your RGB mixer, basically. This thing is really powerful because it can change the color signs of your camera. So I like to turn down the shadows towards green a bit. Move the hue of the red and decrease the saturation of it. And then turn down the saturation on the blue primary somewhere about there. So this is it. This is what you get. This is before, this is after. Right, we're going to skip this panel entirely because I would use this for low light photography. It's a look that I'm still developing, so I'm not going to show it here, but we'll go straight to the tone curve, which is right here for me. So the first thing I do is to give it a bit of color contrast. Put a point here, put a point somewhere right there. Bring up the highlights a little bit, tame the reds a little bit. Bit of color contrast right there. The trick is to, you can right click this, you can copy channel settings, go to greens, and you can paste channel settings, go to blue and do the same. So there you go. This is what I changed. Gives it a lot of a richer color and what have you. But I find that the shadows are too dark, are a bit too rich. So I would increase the shadows from right here. So there you go. Now, because it's film, because I want to limit the bandwidth, I want to limit, because, because, and next, I really like to limit the highlights so I don't blow it out and bring it down a little bit. That's all right. And then lift up the shadows a little bit somewhere about there. This limits whatever I will do later on to the image so it doesn't get too dark or too bright. Next, we go to HSL, which is where I do a lot of shifting around of the colors, hue, saturation, lumen, and so it's going to bring out the colors that I want. It's going to basically push back the colors that I don't want. 
Right, so what I normally do is to shift the red towards orange a little bit. Bring the hue of the orange down somewhere about there. And then bring up the yellow a little bit. Green. I want to shift it towards turquoise a little bit. Right there. Aqua. Or shift it a bit up. Blue needs to go down a little bit. Push up the purple a bit and push up the magenta a bit. So this is what it's doing. It's shifting around the colors. If you look at her skin tone, it went from really quite greenish yellow to basically sort of like a pinkish look. And then I play around the saturation because it's a bit too red. I'll bring down saturation of the red a little bit. Turn down orange as well. Turn down yellow. I want to get rid of the green here as much as possible. There you go. That looks a lot better to me. And the aqua as well. and then bring down the blues. Bring down purple somewhere there and bring down magenta a bit. Now the luminance controls how bright each color is. So red, I want to brighten the red a little bit. Brighten orange as well for skin tone. Decrease a bit of yellow. These boxes are really annoying me. Decrease the green. Aqua and blue are fine. Increase magenta and increase purple. Purple and magenta, sorry. Right, so that's what you get. So this is before, this is after. It's a slight change, but you can see it in the boxes as well. Here you go. Gives it a bit of desaturation. Next, I want to go to grain or push up grain quite a lot, somewhere about 40 to give it more of a film look. So basically, we went from this to this really quickly. Right, the last thing that I would do is to increase the saturation a bit globally to give some richness in the color and then warm it up a little bit to what I like. Now we can stop here, but then I like to take things a little bit further and do a lot of masking. Why do I do masking? Because I want to draw the eye of the viewer towards my subjects a lot better and to dramatize my photographs. Um, so what I do normally is to take a linear gradient, find where the shadows are, pull something from the bottom and then you want to subtract your subject that's basically cut out decrease the exposure to give it a lot more drama decrease the blacks now because we've limited the blacks right in the tone curve below so I can't really push it too far push it downwards I would really like to have a darker foreground as well decrease the black as well and this bit as well decrease it turn down the blacks right so we went from this to this in three masks select my subject it's doing a selection here but that's fine it's not just choosing the person that's okay I'm okay with that Use a brush to do a bit of cleaning up. Go to clarity, turn up clarity a bit. Gives it a bit of contrast. 
increase the whites a bit to increase the brightness. And there you go. The last bit that I really like to do is to go to a light source, do a radial gradient, point it downwards in the same direction and add a bit of, and take out a bit of dehaze to make it more dramatic. So yeah, that's basically it. That's my sort of film look for you guys. Right, we'll work on another photograph, this one, because it's going to be quite repetitive, so I'm just going to work on two. So I'll just right click on this image, develop settings, copy settings. I don't need to copy the masks. Copy and paste. And that's what you get. Now the only difference is the masking. I really want to turn down the contrast as well. Increase the exposure for this guy over here. Go to our crop. Straighten him out a little bit. Center him a bit. That's acceptable. Now we want to bring him out. We want him to pop out. This is obviously too bright. This is distracting as hell. I don't like the yellow as well. So the first thing that I will handle is to select the... Use a brush, paint out this yellow over here. Paint out his chopping block here. And then do point color, select the color and turn down saturation a bit and turn down luminance. Right, generally I like to have negative space around my subject. This thing is just sticking out of him. It's just not a good look. So I'm going to use one of Lightroom's newest tools, the Generative Remove. It's very, very controversial, but then I don't really care. It's my photograph. I do whatever I like with them. Supply it. There you go. That's acceptable. Close it. And then I would go to select people. Let's see if it detects him as a person. Lightroom has problems detecting people sometimes. And it does this time. So yeah, happy days. Increase the whites. Go down to clarity. You want to be really careful about this clarity slider because you can push it too far. This is just not a good look. Balance it out. Just make him pop out. It's a bit too much. And then take Right click on him, duplicate and invert, decrease his surroundings, which is awesome. I see that he doesn't have enough contrast, so I will increase the contrast a little bit. There, give him a quick mask from underneath here. Decrease the exposure, decrease the blacks as well. Lastly, go to sharpening, hold option on Mac. I don't know how it works on Windows. Hold option and just mask out with your sharpening. That is awesome. And then we can actually increase the exposure a little bit. Increase a bit of contrast. I think I've overdone exposure on him. So I want to decrease the whites a bit, increase contrast a bit to make it blend better. Yep, that's done. So yeah, basically that's it. That's what I do. We're not going to work on this because you've seen this on the thumbnail, but then it's basically the same thing. It's basically the same preset. Now, because you're nice enough to have watch this video to this point, I am going to link the preset file right up here for you guys to download completely free of charge. Again, really appreciate it if you subscribe, if you comment on what you want to see next. I'll try my best to make it happen. See you on the next one.